John BPA King of Bowling today, greeting you from Princeton Bowl, and next Sunday it'll be at King Vin Lane's. Now let's get down to the business at hand, introducing our bowlers. And if the scoring we had in qualifying is any indication, <laughs> we're going to have some astronomical scoring here this afternoon. For example, our number one qualifier, you recall last week he was just one strike away from becoming our king, rolled a 783, Dave Callery, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Recently named the bowler of the year, the amateur bowler of the year in the world, Steve Fair, 771. Third qualifier with a 740, lefty Rick Hensley. And our king, 18-year-old Jim Massey, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way he did it last week, too. And our guest commentator today, in addition to our usual standby, Slam and Sammy, would you look at that outfit. One of the area's finest, Davey Newrath, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, beautiful. Match number one, lefty Rick Hensley against Steve Fair. The balls will start rolling right after this word about the beer that brings you bowling. You know what it is. Let's let everyone know. You're so right. And here we go, Princeton Bowl Lane 1718, Lefty Rick Hensley up on 17, and we're underway. And a beautiful way to start. And our guest commentator, who has been on the show numerous times, Davey Newrath, will verify that's the way to start, Dave. Jack, that was an excellent shot. Uh, Rick, it's been on TV before, but he showed no butterflies in throwing that ball excellently. Here's a fellow you should know a lot about, your bowling partner in doubles that captured the ABC doubles crown. I guess this kid deserves the title as the amateur bowler of the world, uh, Davey. No contest, Jack. Uh, I've seen amateur bowlers and professional bowlers from coast to coast, and as you said, I've bowled with Steve now for well, going on six years, and he deserves the title. As a matter of fact, I don't, I can't even think of anyone that's a close second. A lot of bowler, this kid. Sam, we did a feature on he and his wife here a couple of weeks ago on Sports of All Stars. I guess the best husband and wife team around. I don't think there's any better opportunity to do. Dave, he knows where that pocket is, doesn't he? Well, surely does, Sam. And uh, he's playing both lanes uh, right around the area of the second uh, arrow. And he's clearing the ball well. And uh, as with Steve's normal striking power, he's carrying well so far. Here's no newcomer, Rick Hensley. You know, I hate to say this, Dave and Sam, but uh, this fellow is a barber. He'd like to shave a few of those pins off of Steve today. Oh, he would? Really? Thought he'd clip them pretty good, huh? Uh-huh. We had to get that in, oh, didn't we? Oh, certainly. Rick's, uh, Rick's barbershop is about two blocks from my house, so if I don't uh, keep my hair trimmed, he's liable to drag me in there someday. <laughs> well, we've been perfect thus far through two. Well, now, Dave, what did he do on that one? Uh, going high, Jack. Uh, it's it's a natural tendency, especially in a head-to-head uh, -head match play, to uh, to really want that triple. If you get a triple, you go uh, in the teens. If you only get a double, then it's, uh, you know, like seven pins. And he yanked that ball up to the pocket rather than to let it roll. Difficult shot, particularly for a left-hander, but he's going to give it a shot anyhow. Nice try. Well, we give him a T for trying, Sam. T for trying. Well, here's a fellow who can really try. And I'll tell you, Stevie Fair, he's something else. Remember, Carl's Bowler Paddock just shot 35 39 last Thursday at Walt Center Lane Major League. Well, he's perfect. 
being the type of competitor Steve is, uh, you cannot give him an open frame like that because uh, traditionally he'll just throw a triple at you and now automatically uh, we've got a, what, 20 pin difference, Sam? Mm-hmm. It's about 20 pins. That's right. Dave, the amazing thing about his, you know they tell you about having the long arm pendulum swing. You notice how Steve sort of bends the elbow a la Don Carter and he's so effective doing that. He does bend the elbow uh, a little bit, Jack, but notice at the point of release. At that particular point, his arm is perfectly straight. That'll have you talking to yourself. Sam, don't they call that, Dave, the only real tap right there? I would say so. That is, that is a bad break, uh, but uh, Steve should put this uh, eight pin away. If I'm not mistaken, I think he wanted to change balls for this one or not. Or is he still using the same one? Same one, Jack. One thing about Steve, I think he carries about 10 or 12 balls with him wherever he goes. I know uh, I used to have a little opal, and we'd go out of town, and there were many instances when I had to leave a ball or two behind or else uh, leave the suitcase. <laughs> Steve would come in with about eight bowling balls. He has one for all lane conditions. Yes, sir, he does. He knows what each one of them does, too. Get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Rick's back on him again. Well, Jack, they had the U.S. qualifier here a couple years ago. Uh, Rick finished second to Dave Calry, both super. There was about 212 for 30 some games. I remember when he was here. Yeah, gold good, very good. A typical left hander, you know. And speaking of typical left handers, that powerhouse John Gant was top yesterday with 757. Also had a 719. Boy, a little snug, but he got by with it, Davey. Got a very fortunate break there. Uh, pin come off the wall and tripped out the uh, six-pin jacket. It's uh, accredited to the power and a, uh, in his release. Now, you notice, Dave, uh, Dave knows about this, but our viewers may not. He puts that index finger in a special hole in his ball because that used to give him problems. Uh, Jack, it's a very interesting story. And a very interesting strike. Steve, uh, when we were bowling in leagues together way back when, he developed a uh, tendonitis, I believe, in his index finger. And Steve, believe it or not, was about two weeks away from quitting bowling altogether because he was undergoing so much pain at the release point every time he threw the ball. Uh, several people jumped in and uh, figured out a way to save this boy's game and keep him in the game of bowling, and uh, now we have the world's greatest amateur bowler. Isn't that something? Who came up with the idea of putting that hole in there for the index finger? I'm not sure. Uh, good shot. I'm not exactly sure who gets all the credit for that, uh, Jack, if we can even give it all to one person. I, I, I'm pretty sure Bob Harvey was in on it. Uh, uh, Bruni, uh, Bob Bruni had a little something to do with it. Several people all pitched in to save this kid's game, and uh, we, the city of Cincinnati thanks him. Mm, nice to say. Take the Tough break there for Rick. A little cautious with that shot, Jack. Uh, uh, he knows going against a, uh, a Steve Fair, you need strikes, and uh, he tried to fit that ball up a little bit. If you notice, the four pin went into the gutter and laid there. It didn't uh, didn't take the seven out, so it was a cautious shot. Good points brought out by Dave. Yeah, we mentioned yesterday John Gamp with that. 757, Bob Goodwin, 742, Steve Bunnell, 732, and guess who was fourth yesterday? Who did? Dave, Davey Newrath at 721. Oh, that was, that was maybe the kiss of death. I think just a complete emotional letdown there. He he knew he needed that strike there to get back into the match. He's uh, he's got an open and two doubles against a man who's got a triple and a double. Uh, I just think nervousness caused that miss, Jack. 
And that could have been it right there, Dave. Because this fellow he's bowling against, Steve Fair, isn't going to let up. Well, what's the old saying? When it rains, it pours? It certainly does. <laughs> huh? The 410, Jack, it'll be a tough shot to bring back, especially under these circumstances. But uh, I think Rick will just say the heck with it and, and go for it as a crowd pleaser. Love to see these made, too. He's going to give it a shot. Nope. Well, after a blow on the 7 and the 410, this fellow right here is sitting pretty right now, Dave. Well, what this is going to allow, too, Jack, is Steve to try a few different things in case he's not comfortable where he's at. He knows he has the match well in hand, and he can experiment now. He doesn't have to experiment now. <laughs> I guess not. Not where he is. Uh, he's locked in, Jack. Sam, when he's in that hole, he's in that hole. Oh, he hits a pocket with monotonous regularity, I guess you'd call that. Jack, I, I have in front of me a sheet uh, showing Steve's It'll accomplishments. Take you the rest of the day, won't it? Uh, I bowled with him for many years. We need five sheets of paper to list everything that this man has done. And all in about 26 years. That's all he is, and he's been bowling since he's about, uh, I guess, about eight or nine years old. Jack, I don't know if the viewers picked it up on that shot, but uh, uh, Steve did what we call getting around the ball early that time. He dropped a thumb down into a, uh, a, a nine o'clock position a little too soon and therefore did not impart a good heavy roll on the ball and therefore left a weak seven. Cross lane for the seven. Puts it away. Very good. Well, let's see. He's already 188 without rolling. Well, he's got 178 to 120. Got a 58 pin lead in the seventh, so I think the store's been closed. Rick needs a doctor right here. Rick, he's not quitting. Four times shot, baby. Now. No, that was an exceptionally strong ball, Jack. Uh, as a matter of fact, almost too strong. Uh, as he was going through the pocket, the ball just ticked the eight. Notice the eight pin was the last one to go out. He rolled that ball super. Well, here's the frame you fellas love, Dave, that ninth frame. The undergarment frame, as we like to call it. Is that right? The foundation frame. Right. Oh, that's good. Good. All the way. The ninth and tenth frame, Jack, as you mentioned are the, uh, of course, every frame is important, but those two frames there, if you can throw a four-bagger there, you pick up 60 pins. Hey, Steve, notice how he's well underneath that ball. A real picture of concentration. There's a beaut. Sam, it uh, looked to me like he softened up just a hair on that. Did it look yeah, like it to you? Yeah, he slowed it down some. Really. Which caused the ball to break off uh, harder than usual and leaving the 4-9. It was still a good shot, but just a little soft. A UD light right here, he brings this back, Sam. Well, it could be. Dave. He'll take a shot at it, I'll say that. Oh. Stay up, Steve. Well, he's only got 205, is what I have. That's right, 205 and a ninth. In match play competition, Jack, if you shoot a 155, that's okay <laughs> as long as you win. Well, he's already got this one put away, Sam. Let's see the possibility for Rick. 210. 210. All we got to have out of Steve is six pins right here, am I right? I think he would get six. He'll get that right here. Well, there's enough to win. This ball has seemed to slow down in the last couple of frames. It seemed to top that ball too that time. Yes, sir. When you slow your uh, delivery down, Jack, your body has a tendency to do things early, uh, which will cause him to get around the ball early and therefore maybe even pull it a little bit. So the speed is the key with Steve right now. Well, I'll 
take a 225 any day of the week. I certainly would, too. So Steve has put away Rick Hensley in match one. He isn't going to have an easy one in that second match in Dave Callery, who only shot 783 in qualifying. There it is. There's a ripper. That looked like the Steve of old days. Well, he changed balls there, Jack. Mm -hmm. if, if you notice, he went to his other uh, harder plastic ball, which skids down the lane further, delays the roll, and uh, therefore allows him to play a light pocket shot. More and more bowlers using that softer ball today, aren't they? Well, you're absolutely right, Jack. The, uh, the softer ball allows the uh, uh, allows you to get more gripping action on the lane, and then even when it hits the pins, it has a tendency to throw the pins around a lot harder than the uh, than the old mineral lights. Maybe that. Uh, I know Eddie Jackson saw a ball I was using a couple of weeks ago on a charity match, and he said, where in the world did you get that one? He said, put that one in the garbage. He said, that one out with high-button shoes. Well, it's a highly technical game nowadays, Jack. Look at this fellow now, would you? I think get 210 with one more. It's a shame, you know, that he had those uh, two splits and that one blow. was a difference here, Dave. Yeah, it would have been a yes, contest. Sir. Yes, sir, there is. Uh, again, I think it's been a while since Rick's been on the show. I mm -hmm. think uh, I think the butterflies got to him, and and rightly so sometimes. And uh, now he's relaxed and just free wheeling, and you can see the results. Two oh eight. But the winner with a two twenty five is Stevie Fair, Steve and Dave Callery. After this.